want to get to you call John Rogers the comeback king. Um, why? Well, you know, Ariel, it's had obviously you know ups and downs as any investment firm has had over that's had a forty year track record. Uh, it, its best years have come, you know, out of the broader market's lowest points and some of the own firm's lowest points. Uh, in 2008, obviously, you know, it was a, a bad year for most investors. Ariel was no exception. It fell, you know, its main Ariel fund, the flagship fund, fell 48% that year. Uh, investors fled, withdrew their money. It was really almost an existential crisis for the firm that, you know, mm-hmm. they were wondering if they'd survive. Their assets went down from $21 billion at its peak in the middle of that decade down to $3 billion at the low point. And uh, they kind of uh, just stayed stuck to their guns. And, and, you know, a lot of those stocks that had performed so poorly that year, they added more to their those positions. They added new positions. And they came back with a 63% gain in 2009, uh, which uh, was, you know, outperformed most of their peers, the rest of the market. Uh, same as in the, the dot-com bubble, you know, they kind of underperformed the most of the stock market in the late 1990s when there was just this growth bubble, valuations right. were exploding, tech we're stocks. We're all buying pets.com, et cetera. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and they've never really been, you know, following the crowd in that way. And then, you know, that popped and, and the S&P 500 crashed in, you know, 2001, 2002. And both those years, Ariel was still up, you know, double digits, uh, and, and 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 it's it's out. It's gone from underperforming again. This pattern um, during sort of the downturn we saw late last year to now at least on track to be outperforming this year. Wh- where are they placing their bets right now? Yeah, uh, their largest holding is Madison Square Garden Entertainment, uh, and they also have a couple other media bets, including a Paramount Global. Um, both of those stocks didn't perform well at all last year. I mean, media, you know, we all know about the disruption, streaming wars, you know, so much competition, yeah. uh, cord cutting, you know, there's all these scary words out there. And, you know, Rogers, uh, you know, just the main philosophy of being greedy when others are fearful, buying at maximum pessimism, really believes that, you know, they can monetize that content. And, and the MSG side, uh, this is a company that spun off from their sports business in 2020. So it, it manages the live entertainment at Madison Square Garden. It also has Radio City Music Hall. Um, John Rogers talks a lot about the MSG Sphere, which is a $2.2 billion venue in Las Vegas that's going to open this year. And he thinks it's going to bring in a lot of revenue. And, mm-hmm. and as people, you know, especially out of COVID, we're all starting to kind of. Hey, New go, York's in a casino race right now. So go enjoy, you know, a little a little more luxury and, and live events and experiences. And uh, it, it performed, you know, extremely well in January. Uh, you know, I don't think Rogers would ever take a one month performance as, as something that's indicative of, of uh, you know, a long term trend or track record. Past but, performance does not necessarily, <laughs> you know, dictate future gains. But I'm sure it's certainly something he's happy with. Um, you know, MSG, I think there's been some controversy with it, with, uh, you know, the facial recognition they're using to, you know, ban uh, lawyers that work at the firms uh, that are involved in litigation proceedings against the company oh. from entering. Jim, Jim Dolan, uh, who obviously is a Nick's uh, controversial owner in a lot of ways, uh, you know, has made some enemies. But, you know, it, obviously he's built these uh, great, you know, venues and great networks. Uh, Roger cited the uh, regional sports network that falls under that, that broadcasts the New York Knicks and New York Rangers games. Uh, you know, he's a definitely a basketball fan and thinks the Knicks are going to win again someday. Let me ask a question. Because they're on such prominent boards, and I know, of course, Meldy Hobson is married to George Lucas, and, um, you know, do they have to, do they stay away from the companies in which they have some sort of fiduciary duty as a director, or do we know? I mean, they're not on the boards of the companies that 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 they in their portfolio. Uh, I think they do think their board experience is kind of, uh, you know, are very you know educational and sure, informative, of course, and, and of help course. make connections and and. But and they wouldn't have ideas. Starbucks as a core holding in a fund in which she's chair of the Stars Starbucks board, right? No. I'm just trying to... And Ariel and you know they their core is small companies, small and mid cap companies, and and they've reached a stature, I guess, where they're on the boards of these large companies. But right. there's not much overlap between that and and their 